Hi, David Ellenstein here, Artistic Director of North Coast Repertory Theater. Thank you for tuning in today to our theater conversations. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. That would help us out a lot. Thank you. Hi, it's my pleasure today to uh, welcome the crack design team from North Coast Repertory Theater, who uh, time and time again proves what amazing things can be accomplished in a small space uh, when you're working with uh, talented and creative people. So um, I'm gonna let the, the four uh, designers who are with us today introduce themselves. And uh, just so you have a, a point of reference as to who's speaking and uh, what their area of expertise is. Marty, you wanna start? Hi, everybody. I'm Marty Burnett. I'm the uh, resident designer and tech director at the theater. I'm just so very happy that everybody's okay during these uh, trying times. I've been with North Coast Rep since 1992, July of 92. I started with the theater. I'm coming up. I hope I can get it, but I'm coming close to 200 designs. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. Maybe. I hope we should be able to get there. I, uh, I've, uh, well, let's say I've designed a lot of shows in the summer in the space. It's challenging. I'm so used to the space now. And we work with such a team that we're very cohesive because we've been working together for such a long time, which is, I suppose, a rarity in the theater. But uh, I've been working with Lisa and Melanie and Matt forever. I know Matt. We've done our lighting designers, well, probably up there close to my number in designs. But uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just very happy to to be here and see everybody. So, is there anything else I could yeah, talk we'll, about? We'll, we'll, t we'll talk a lot more in a minute, Marty. That All we, right. We just want to see your pretty face and say hello. Ah! Just start. Oh. <laughs> All right, e Elisa. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Elisa Benzoni, and I'm the costume designer. And uh, I've been working with North Coast Rep now for I want to say three or four seasons. And um, I grew up in Italy, but I'm San Diego based, and I'm so happy to get to see all these people who I miss and usually get to work with all the time. And now we're, it's been a while since we've gotten to see each other. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, Melanie? Hi, I'm Melanie Chen Cole. Um, I'm a freelance sound designer. I've been working um, with North Coast Rep on and off since uh, 2014, I think it is. Um, and I miss seeing everybody here. So thank you for having me. And Matt. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Navani. I'm the resident lighting designer for North Coast Rep. And Marty, I'm not quite, but I'm <laughs> North Coast <80 shows> working <laughs> out there. Uh, my first show was 2008, uh, designing the musical there, uh, Baby, was my first show wow. there. And I've done um, a vast majority of the shows since then. I think I've done all in the last six seasons. Um, I had to miss one prior to that because of one of the kids being born. But other than that, oh yeah, I have five kids too, if you didn't know. I know everybody there knows. Um, and yeah, and I design all around San Diego, but North Coast Trap is my home, so. Hey, hey, Matt, you have five kids. How old is the oldest? Eight. <laughs> Uh, okay, everybody. Eight, seven, five, and one. So I want everybody to realize how thick their lives are and then have a little perspective when you think about Matt's <laughs> with five kids with the oldest being eight. Okay, so ju just to, uh, to jump in a little bit on this, so, so Marty um, said that he's coming up on his 200th show design, consecutive design at North Coast Rep, which I got to think is some kind of record. And uh, if, if you uh, know American Theater Magazine, Marty's actually featured in it this week, if you, this month, if you take a look, Marty's in there. They talk about his uh, 200 designs. And then Elisa is our resident costume designer. She designs a lot of other places as well, but she's our resident costume designer. Uh, Melanie has designed a ton of shows for us. She's not our resident sound designer, but um, when she's available, we try to use Melanie because she does such great work. And then Matt is our resident lighting designer, although he also designs other places and also has a, a rather uh, prestigious full-time 
other kind of job as well in the uh, lighting and audiovisual world. So uh, these are very busy people who make the time seven times a year to uh, create our shows. So um, I want you each to describe a little bit uh, the process of design. And, and I wanna um, say, it's, say it isn't a show that I'm directing at North Coast, because I have a shorthand with all of you, where I, because I've worked with you so many times, I can communicate with you, you know, in, in a way that most people that don't know you and haven't worked with you can't. So I want you to imagine it's a director at North Coast Rep that you haven't worked with before. And say there's a play, talk to me about the process of how it moves forward with a between a director and a designer. Marty, you want to jump in first? Uh, certainly. Uh, well, let's uh, let's take the show we're working on now, Human Air. I've been working with Jane Page, um, the director of that show. We both read the script. She sent. Well, most directors do. I I don't like to but sometimes I do design the show before we talk because the director has a specific idea of how you know a, a, a play can go a hundred different ways depending on the director and the, the director's vision of how they want to see that show proceed but our stage I don't think so but a lot of directors think our stage is maybe a little quirky it's not a typical proscenium uh, theater that most people would probably are, have seen or gone to. So we discussed the requirements, what they would like to see. Mostly it's like furniture placement or uh, where they would like a door or if they want it center because it's more uh, dominant there as a, as a powerful image. But then I get the idea, the, uh, the requirements of what the director wants, and then I just sketch out a little ground plan and a thumbnail rendering of what the what the set is kind of going to look like from there uh we refine we change we go through a lot of different changes and uh you know i'm i'm thinking to myself god do i know what i'm doing i i sometimes it's very difficult to come up with the ideas you know of what will work in the show you don't like to get it you can't get too little or too much it has to just fit the story that you're trying to tell and uh so you refine over a period of time, and then we come up with something that everybody can work with. Elisa, Matt, Melanie. And so it's all a cohesive, unified idea that you spring forward with. So uh, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes we're all just kind of flowing the same way. We all have the same feel about the show, and then we march forward. So uh, it's exciting. Every show is a, exciting and different and new. That's why I love this job, because it's just not cookie cutting every show. They're all different. They're all unique. Um, so uh, I, I really enjoy that. And it's a challenge. Sometimes I, 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 I think I can't do it. I, I'm not going to, I don't have the creative ideas to come up with anything, but usually with teamwork, and all the help you get from the people you're working with, it just, it happens. Well, it's happened for, you know, 30 years. So <laughs> we're doing something right. So it's Elisa, fun. You want to jump in, Elisa? Sure. Um, so my process always begins, of course, with like multiple reads of the script. And then I like to sort of break down all the characters because uh, my work is often uh, involves a similar process as the actors and the director, which is learning and understanding every character. So um, the difference usually with David and I is that it can be in one conversation and we know exactly what we want to do. But with a new director, it might take a few conversations to break down all the characters versus talking about the world as a whole. And um, we discuss the concept that the director is approaching this production with and then how I can support concept in my, my part of the world. And um, the, the next step after having discussed all of these things tends to be a lot of research on my end. And so that could be historical research, that can be contemporary research. Sometimes it's a piece of art that's 
speaks to us in terms of color, but I um, generally don't work, I can't work in a void, so I will usually rely on seeing what Marty has brought to the table in terms of the space. So that's where we talk about color as well, making sure that the characters reflect the world that they're in and also that we let them stand out in their own way. And um, how do they evolve? How do they change? And how do they um, represent various parts of the world that they live in? And so I then have a ton of research that I have to filter through and I share with my director. And from that, we'll move on to, depending on the, the scale of the show, but with Amadeus that we did um, just last year, we, there was a lot of process also of, of rendering. So we do a lot of pencil sketches. If we like those, then we move on to painted, finished drawings that we can share with the actors um, and everyone else that's involved. Great, great. Melanie, you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Um, with sound, uh, my kind of discipline kind of happens a little bit later. We, you know, there's a technical rehearsal process where all the elements get put together. So that's when the lights and sound really um, start working. But um, typically when I work with David, we do have one, one or two conversations early on and we kind of build the world from there. And um, because I've worked with him, uh, there's this trust where he um, kind of is able to kind of make decisions um, closer to the end on the fly. But um, when I work with new directors, um, when I haven't worked with them before, they want to hear um, what I'm thinking early on. So if, if I am doing found music, I would do research as um, first rehearsal is happening, giving them an idea of the world that I'm thinking of. If I am composing, um, sometimes that we have an earlier com conversation. So sometimes even before the actors are um, cast, we kind of start sketching out the world in terms of that instrumentation, style, that sort of thing, just to have something prepared um, as they are rehearsing through the show. But for me, I think the, the one thing that I try to always give them is sounds that are written in the script. Um, you know, there's always door slams or dog barking or car driving by, and those kinds of sounds help them um, kind of work on during rehearsal, but the music kind of comes in at the end during tech, so, yeah. Great, great. And Matt, what, how do we light them up? <laughs> lighting design is interesting because lighting design is probably the last physical element that gets added to a production um, because of the fact that it's kind of hard a lot of times for directors and people to visualize kind of what lighting designers are talking about. So the way that my process has kind of evolved with this specific company is that um, early on, it's understanding the basic discussions of what does the show actually call for, similarly to like what Marty said, you know, and to what Melanie said about what are the practicals that are needed for the show, what are the physical elements that are required lighting wise for that production and understanding what those are at the beginning. But I have a lot of what I draw on, um, on what everybody else is working on creating. So for me, you know, I understand the script and the concept and everything early on about what the production is going to be, but I really wait for a lot of it to happen and see the magic happens when they're doing those designer runs, which is the run, it, sometimes it's the first actual run that the performers get to do, but it's getting to see the way that the director and the performers have taken the production and understanding how Marty's gone with the set and how uh, Elise has gone with the, with the costumes and understanding how all those elements kind of fit together and then allows me the ability to add what I do on top of it to kind of try and, and help unify the entire vision of what the, the audience is going to see on the stage. So for me, that's really the direction that I take in design is um, seeing the direction the elements are going and having the input that I need to along the way. Because there are some times where like Elise's costumes are very specific and I want to make sure that I know early on going into it, I don't want to light that kind of costume in a specific way or, you know, with Marty's sets, you know, I have to understand where his sets are physically going to go in the space. So I know what realm that I have to be able to hang lights on and what angles that I can use and can't use early on in the process to make sure that I can get what I need to lighting wise on the performers on stage. So that's kind of how my process has been developed over time. Great, great. So missing from this conversation, I just realized is our properties designer, with there's always a prop designer as well, who works very closely with Marty uh, to make sure that the props that are brought in, because sometimes that can be small furniture pieces or the artwork on the wall matches with what Marty has in mind for the set. Also missing a wig designer. There's often a wig designer who will work in tandem uh, with Elisa to make sure that the wigs go with the costumes and that uh, all the physical action can happen that needs to happen with the costumes and the wigs if people have to flop around on the floor, for instance, or have love scenes, that that stuff is going to work. Uh, also, fight choreographers and um, 
dialect coaches. So there's a whole bunch of people missing from this conversation, but it's great to be Oh, there's a big person missing also that we should really give a shout out to that brings this all together, and that's Aaron. And I think we'll all agree that Aaron, Aaron is probably one of the best production uh, managers in the country. I say Andy Hickel for sure, but I, I shouldn't say that because somebody's going to steal him away. But uh, <laughs> I think everybody would uh, jump in and agree that Aaron is uh, invaluable in what we're doing. At North Coast Rep, there is no doubt that Aaron is. An, Aaron is our production manager, and he also stage manages uh, usually three shows a year for us as well. Right. And the whole process as we go forward, make sure that we're all coordinated. Um, so um, we're lucky that we have a group that works together a lot because we've all been in situations where that's not true, where it's hard to get people onto the same page. Not that I necessarily want you to talk about that, but <laughs> if you think about uh, shows that you've worked on, What's an unusual uh, experience you've had? What, what show jumps to your mind that makes you say, this is something that surprised me that I didn't expect to happen. It turned out either not well or it turned out really well and in a way that you didn't expect it. If you all want to comment and maybe uh, talk about one experience that was unique that, that jumps to your mind, anybody that wants to go first. Dracula. Never do Dracula. <laughs> that is the worst show it's cursed i swear to god that show is cursed i had to rig up a bat to fly from the light booth onto a stage at the fiesta dinner theater theater in spring valley california doesn't exist anymore i think david you may have worked there no i didn't work there but i knew i knew all about it yeah <laughs> i had a bat fly across stage and i was just cutting my teeth at this place you know I, I had to rig up with no money i rigged up a bat that flew from the light booth that came down and the line broke and it grabbed the, the claws and the bat grabbed the woman's wig and flew off with it onto the stage. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that happening in live theater? Let's put it in a show, Mark. <laughs> uh, it would never happen. It's a one in a million shot and it happened. I don't know if she sued the theater or not. But anyway, that's another story. So the kind of you know, things, that's the beauty of life theater too, isn't it? Anything can happen. We hope that it, anything doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. So, yeah. I'm, I think to, to, to sort of go off of what David was saying, I think that when we work sometimes with people that we don't get to work with all the time, I think that there's always unexpected things. I think that we all sort of have a shared vocabulary that we now know how to work with one another and how to communicate with one another and give each other the information that's essential to be able to do our jobs and have a cohesive final product. But I think that sometimes is the um, both excitement and the challenge of working with completely new people because you have no idea what, what, when we get into technical rehearsals, which is when all of the elements, all of the technical elements, as well as the physical elements of the acting come together. It's uh, sometimes fascinating how you might have gone in completely different directions because we just all didn't speak the same language, which I don't think ever happened. But they want to change it in tech rehearsal. And then you get to make lots of changes because you find out at the very last moment that we were all doing completely different things. But I don't think we've ever had that problem at North Coast because we all have the same language and we have, you know, we have clear direction. So that sometimes is definitely a surprise when you walk into tech and you realize, Oh, we did very different things. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that's interesting is um, when, when you have outside directors that are coming in, they're not familiar with our process. And I think the big one that kind of jumps out in my mind uh, is around the world in 80 days when we did that one. Uh, was it last season or the year before? Two years ago. Two years ago. Um, it was with an outside director who had done it before. Um, and we brought it into North Coast Rev with her directing it. And the challenge is, is that, you know, they had a lighting person that brought in all of their own lighting stuff and they had forever to tech the show. And that's one of the things that I think outside people coming in don't necessarily understand is, you know, we've been able to condense our process so much. I mean, I, I know theaters that, that will spend 40 hours teching a show and we do it in 15. Um, and that's one of those shows where you know, around the world in 80 days, they had a long time to tech it, which you did it before. And I think we actually got through that entire show. I think we did it in 15 hours. Um, and he was amazed 
by how fast we could all work. And it's to everybody's point that we all have worked together for so long and know our design elements and know our space so well that we can make a show as complex as that and turn it out really fast because we understand how all of our, each other work and we can do things infinitely faster because of that. Melanie, do you have a show that jumps to your mind as surprised you? Yeah, I think it sometimes does happen, especially with sound. Um, we kind of get left, not at North Coast Rep, but um, this one I'm specifically thinking was a new play that I've done, I did around in San Diego where um, the, the director kind of talked to me last minute and I was like a little bit outside of the process. And then when I came in, it was a comedy, but all the music that I built was very drama because she was like, oh, you know, we got to pull these traditional instruments and we have to have these like swelling melodies. And so I created this whole very orchestral score for the piece. And then I walk in and I was like, this is a Christmas comedy. What's happening? And so I felt very much like the one that didn't get the memo. Um, and, you know, during tech, we try to make it all fit together, but um, it, it just became a little bit of a Mess. And so I think um, a lot of the audience response that I got was like, oh, you know, was it supposed to be funny? Was it supposed to be sad? I feel a little bit of both. And so um, I feel like um, that goes for working with someone new and somebody who I guess didn't really know how to communicate with my particular department or, you know, didn't know how to invite me in with the rest of the designers. And so, yeah, that was definitely um, a jarring experience. So. Uh, so so that, that's what's awesome about working with this group of people. I'll just say as a director, um, they are all about wanting the play to be as good as it can be. And their work is only about making that happen in the best way that it can. It's not about personal and, and grandizement. It's about the play. And that's always what I hope from everybody that's working on, on a show that I'm involved with or at North Coast Rep, where I have some say as to how we're going to do it. And But all four of these designers are so about the play. And so Marty was uh, alluding to making changes in tech, and that happens sometimes. As you're actually seeing something uh, flow for the first time with all the elements, you go, wait a minute this has to happen or this set piece doesn't work now or uh, this costume doesn't work or this this sound cue is just wrong and so none of these four people that i'm talking to here have any issues with making the changes if it's going to make the play better and that's that's i i, I love working with all of them um anything else uh, we've, we're having this conversation and i'm kind of leading you but um as we've been sitting here what's come to your mind that's something that you might want to share with uh, our audience about design and go, what, what, what about design makes the play come together? I think uh, for me on my end, uh, and I, I'm sure I can sort of speak for everybody when it comes to design is that, uh, and, and I teach also uh, costume design, and this is always something that I try to have my students understand first and foremost, is that exactly what you were saying, David, is that we don't just do pretty things for the sake of them being pretty. It's that we, our prim primary job is to tell a story. And so we actually have extensive conversations and uh, uh, analysis of, of the text in order to make those decisions. So it's not just aesthetic it's that it's design as and and storytelling and so i think that sometimes as fun as it is to do pretty things sometimes the really ugly things are actually the things that become more interesting for us to work on because they are m far more filled with story and character um, so I know that that sometimes uh, that the analysis and breakdown of the text that we go through that also happens in the rehearsal room is something that that nobody knows that we get to be involved in as well. I can second that with Elisa. We had such great fun with, uh, if you recall, of Mice and Men. Yeah. If you know, so uh, Lisa brought these uh, brand new <laughs> tagged <laughs> costumes for the show. And we both got out some dirty water and some dye, and we distressed every one of them. That was a fun process, actually. And that really helped tell the story because mm -hmm. what the actors do a beautiful job of, of, of telling the story, and they probably do a great job. It was just black drapes there, and they wore all just a black costume. But we helped them tell that story. Don't you agree? that with our backdrop and the costumes they wear and the sound that's, uh, and the lighting, that's, we've enhanced it, we've helped. 
but the actors are really, and the director are really uh, the, the main focus of, the, of that show. And we're just helping them out the best we can. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I definitely agree with what Marty just said. Um, I feel like sometimes when I go see um, a designer run, so like Matt said, it's the one we see before we get into the space and do tech. Um, sometimes um, when you watch it and all the actors are so good, you're like, I hope that when I add my element, I don't mess that up because my job is really to, you know, kind of support them and uplift them instead of, you know, trying to slap something on top of what's already been beautiful and happening. So that sometimes that's my fear of like, I'm putting too much on it, but they've already done a great job. So how do we kind of balance that as designers? I think one of the great things is, is the, the wide variety of things that we have the opportunity to work on a Northwest draft. Because in any given season, you go through the gamut of classic pieces, of brand new pieces, of musicals. And, and with a lot of it, it's, it's not necessarily about, you know, yeah, this is the audience's the first time seeing it. But like one of the ones that came to mind was when we did, um, a couple years ago, when we did Blythe Spirit that uh, Rosina Reynolds directed. You know, it's a classic play, it's been done forever. Um, but we always, as designers, especially at North Coast Draft, try to bring something new to the piece. And like, the, the one that sticks out to me was when Rosina and I were talking about the production, I had this idea of, you know, the room that they are in being very warm. And then anytime the spirit came on, of suddenly changing the color and the feel of the room from warm to cool to represent the ghost calm. And she's done this play several times, and it's something that she'd never done before, but she was totally willing and open to let me try it. So we went through the entire process and I kind of built them very subtly to happen throughout the show. So at the very end, when we have a ghost come on stage that we don't see and the audience feels the color change, they understand that, oh, there's a presence in the room, even though we can't see it. So that was for me, a, like my concept. And, you know, we went through the entire tech process and she never mentioned it to me again from our initial conversation. And then I got an email from her like two weeks later after the show had opened. And she went back and she said, you know what, I was sitting and I was sitting and watching the show and what the actors were doing. And she, and she said to me, she's like, you know, that's one of those things that we talked about and I just let you do what you wanted to do. Um, but I never really noticed it. But getting to sit back and actually watch what you created, she's like, it's really moving because of the fact that I can understand it now about why you wanted to do it. And she's like, it totally fits with the, with the production. And she's very glad that us here at the Trapper wanting to try those types of new things with even over the show because it, it it enhances the audience experience. And I think that's a great part of what we do at North Coast Rep, is just, especially in, with how intimate the space is, is try to enhance the audience's experience of the different productions that we do. That's great. Um, so as, as a director, you know, um, we spend most of our time in rehearsal working with the actors. We get a couple of design meetings ahead, but we work with the actors in the rehearsal room. Uh, then we get to tech, and I'm a director who loves tech. Because to use the word that Marty used, uh, tech is about focus, as far as I'm concerned. And adding the lights that focus where the attention is going to look. Adding the sound that attunes the ear to what the mood is or what the um, essence of what the scene is they're about to see. To look at that costume that focuses that character into who they are. Um, and, and of course, the set that creates the focus of the world. That, that you're in for the whole play. And um, so I love tech and I love being able to have designers that are willing and open to work. I mean, I, I hope I'm open to ideas most of the time. Um, I, I have my vision for a play, but I try to stay open and, and go with stuff. If something rubs me wrong, I gotta say it rubs me wrong. <laughs> Let's not do that. But, but most of the time, if the idea is like something I hadn't thought of and it catches me, I'm excited, yeah, because it's all, it, this is such a collaborative art form and having the right collaborators makes all the difference in the world. So I can't wait till we're all in the same room together again and I don't have to look at your little box face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hopefully that's coming soon and thank you for doing this today and sharing a little bit with the audience about the process we go through to make a play. And I'll see you all. Thank you. Stay healthy. Thanks, well. <laughs> Thanks, David. See you soon. Thank you.